Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. So does this engine look familiar? This is the 440 I built earlier this year. I built it, dyno tested it. It made 515 horsepower, 624 foot-pounds of torque, then I painted it. After I painted it, it was installed in the vehicle, and the guy drove it, and he loved it. He put about 14 miles on it, really strong engine, more than he needed. He absolutely loved it. Very stout engine, but there was a problem. Brought it back to the shop put it up on a lift and he went to check it just to make sure everything's okay and he found a crack in the block leaking coolant. So the big question is why? Why did the block crack? Was it cracked when I started? What caused it to crack? So what I'm gonna do is, I've never done this before because I've, I've never had an engine come back for any reason, much less a cracked block. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have a series. We're gonna take this engine apart and see if we can figure out what made the block crack, if we can figure it out. We're gonna troubleshoot that, inspect the engine as we're taking it apart, and we're gonna to have to rebuild it. I have another block, a new engine. I also took that one apart, it was a short block. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna inspect the components that I took out of that block to see how that block was performing. If there's anything abnormal, you can tell a lot by the way the parts are wearing. So this is gonna be like a diagnostic series on engine. Uh, engine building or engine disassembly and diagnostic. What made the block crack? If you buy a short block and take it apart, how to inspect the components to see whether or not the engine or the block was running fine since the last rebuild, if it was rebuilt. And what to check for uh, with the block before you send it to the machine shop. Now, it's at the machine shop now. I've already done that ahead of time, but I've, I've got some video built up and we'll check it out. But this will be an interesting series because it's about diagnostic rather than just putting together and what to check. How do you figure out what went wrong? Now I've, in my shop here, I've built hundreds of engines. Never had, I've had diagnostics to do before for small things on a dyno. Um, not really leaks, but uh, inversion, some kind, sometimes you get leaks on the M manifold. Small stuff like that is easy to fix. But when you have something significant, like a crack or a fracture, or something fails, how you take an engine apart is just as, if not more important than how you put it together because you certainly don't want to create an issue or create something that looks like a failure or is gonna to contribute to what looks like the failure while you're taking it apart. So taking it apart is very careful, uh, is very important. Now I wanna share that in, in my shop here, I haven't had to disassemble many engines to do uh, a diagnostic on the entire engine. However, in my career, working in engine manufacturing facilities as an engineer on engine assembly and testing, I've had to assess hundreds if not thousands of engines over my career to try and figure out why it failed testing. And the incredibly small things that can go wrong with a brand new engine in the factory that will cause it to fail are astonishing. Maybe along the way I'll share some of the stories for you. Maybe I'll share the story about how a chocolate bar caused an engine to fail. That one was the most interesting thing that ever had happened. But we'll do that. This is gonna be an investigative series. We'll take this apart. We'll analyze the one that I took apart. We'll look at those components, make sure it's all, all good, and then we will have to put this together, build a new engine, dyno test it, and make sure it's okay. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.